Hello, good evening, and welcome back. COVID anti-vaxxers should face action for spreading false information that could cost lives, Britain's top counter-terror officer says. Yes, this seems to be very much with the <laughs> computing forever train of thought now, doesn't it? That the idea, well, oh, this is all just conspiracy theories that clearly not trying to push any other agenda. Um, actually, I'm not so sure about that anymore. And with the election in America being contested so heavily and scrutinized, as it bloody well should be, that I've kind of got the thought, as mentioned on my Christiansen show, that maybe the, the ruling leads, the, the ones in the shadows, if you will, are a bit concerned that they're not going to be able to push through everything that they want to do, and they won't succeed this time like they didn't with the swine flu epidemic. And so I think that they're just trying to just just push it all through, just get it all done now, because I don't know if we're going to get another opportunity like this in the future. So just just force it through. And, of course, then cracks are starting to show us that the strain is becoming unbearable, which is brilliant, because at least then the foot-in-the-door theory is being a bit overused and that the escalation is too much too quickly and therefore people are becoming aware of hang, hang on a minute it's like yes we're concerned about a virus but what's this about why why are there now anti-speech laws happening this seems a little bit unrelated and of course it is so met assistant commissioner neil basu said infor- misinformation could cost lives <laughs> He added, striking a balance with free speech was a debate for society to have. Well, I I think we know, if you're talking about free speech, then there'll be no action to the people who disagree with you politically at all. If you think there should be um, a criminal case against people who disagree with you politically, then that isn't freedom of speech. One and done. Islamist and far-right groups use false COVID-19 claims to groom recruits. Well, it it really does make me wonder if these things are supposed to be so obvious and so fake, then surely they should be addressed and just debunked straight off the bat to say, oh, here's another claim, not true because of these facts here. Oh, here's another one, okay, not true because of these facts here. This is another one. Not true because of these facts here. For example, you could say the 5G conspiracy. Not true because there are countries with nowhere near the infrastructure of 5G, let alone actually having it, that are having COVID cases. So it's got nothing to do with the 5G towers then. For example. But (laughs) when they go on to try and say, yes, well, as Matt Hancock says, that this vaccine is perfectly safe because it's gone through very stringent and strict tests in order to pass our standards and you're thinking well hang on don't vaccines seem to have longer lasting effects that would only come out maybe a year or several years down the line or several months down the line i mean (laughs) i know it's not a vaccine but we do all remember thalidomide do we not the morning sickness pill for pregnant women that led to their children being born with deformities because that was fine for quite a while but hey never let a crisis go unused so anti-vaxxers who spread false news about the dangers of a coronavirus cure could be punished by new laws to tackle misinformation at least of course that's what they'd say the problem of malicious propaganda potentially causing people to die after avoiding treatment should be debated according to Britain's top counter-terrorism officer. Medicist and Commissioner Neil Basu said that there should be a discussion about whether society should let this happen. Yes, science is never finished. There's never an end point for science. The idea is discovery, learning things, and finding those answers. But we're never going to know everything. There is always going to be more to learn. There are always going to be more questions raised and answers to be found. So we can never say, yep, results are in, we, we definitely know it all now, and we, we can stop. It's like, no. And surely, surely, with the coronavirus epidemic itself, that... (laughs) 
<laughs> the guidance from the World Health Organization, which had gone back and forth. Uh, lockdown, yes. Lockdown, no. Masks, no. Masks, yes. And now, of course, the new Danish study saying, well, masks, do we need them? If they're not being washed in like, hospital-grade washing machines, uh, are they actually helping at all? N- no, no, they're not. But yes, apparently, where we are now... What we know right now, this is the science. This is definitely true. There will be no future evidence coming out which disproves any of the claims we're making right now. What we did before, they were mistakes. What's in the future is is going to find out that what we're doing right now is true. Definitely, 100%. There's, There's no room for doubt on any of this. Because if you say there's a chance that we might be incorrect in our findings, we're not debating it. You're going to prison. And you're you're getting silenced, of course. So it's like, oh, what's that? You're concerned about losing your job and then not being able to pay your mortgage. Right, but if you voice that, you'll lose your job because you're going to go to prison. Mm. And let's just top it off. You're then not going to be able to find a job afterwards because in order to justify this to everybody else, we're going to label you as, as far right or um, <laughs> Islamic extremist then, but m- most likely far right. And therefore... You know, it's the terrorist offence now, which means you've got that on your permanent record, that you're a terrorist. Good luck getting on with the life after that. So you've decided to, to be quiet about it. Yeah, thought so. That is legitimately the way that they're going with it. You've got questions about how the government is, is handling things. You think it's going a bit too socialist. You think that it's locking people down unnecessarily and removing freedoms a bit too strictly, you're a terrorist. That's what they're saying. That is why, of course, it's <laughs> the counter-terror organization that's weighing in on this. However, Mr. Basu stopped short of endorsing the idea of a new law, according to the Evening Standard. He said, There is a debate for society to have about free speech and responsibility and people who are spreading misinformation that could cost people's lives, whether that is the correct thing for this society to allow to happen. Right, which essentially is saying, yes, I think this is a good idea and it should definitely go ahead, but probably won't look good. So let's say no, or if you want to be really charitable, and this is very charitable, he's saying, yes, this is what I think and it should go ahead, but there's a chance I could be wrong, so let's let's have a think about it. Except if he knew that there was a chance he could be wrong once new information came to light, then he'd be against creating a law that would stop people disagreeing with you now on the off chance new evidence comes to light. (laughs) So, let's not be that charitable. (laughs) It's just giving himself a uh, a way out, a back door, if you will. So he added, I'm worried that the radicalization of some of the most vulnerable people in our society, namely our children, is happening by online groomers and terrorists, both from the Islamist and extreme right-wing ideologies. It's the online radicalization, the explosion of online and technological devices in people's hands 24-7 on top of the pandemic, which has effectively led to a lot more time people are spending on those devices, locks in their rooms away from their protective influences while they've been out of school or out of colleges. Yeah, you, you, you take them out of an indoctrinating institution you allow a bit of freedom, people are going to have questions <laughs> because they're no longer being told what to, what to think, but actually they're learning how to think. So now they've got questions. And it seems like you're not used to having to answer questions. You're just used to telling people what to do without them asking back. And maybe then a lot of people as well are being told what to do and what to think. And so when there were other people, like their own children, becoming critical thinkers and saying, Oh, hang on, Mum. Hang on, Dad. Why are we doing this? And their only response is, oh, the government says it, so it must be right. Then, of course, they're going to go, well, I think from what I've learned that all these claims are false. So what's up with that? And if it's just the government says it, it's like, well, where's the legitimacy of the government? <laughs> and then you get your whole other rabbit hole. So I don't think the government are doing themselves any favours here, but I suppose that's hardly to be surprised. They've um, become a bit complacent in their time. So they're saying, it's all given more time for their radicalization to take place. The people who are going to stop it are the people who love them the most, who are the friends and family that see the change in behavior. <laughs> yeah, so, so don't answer the questions, don't try and help out. Just just stop it. Just say, no, you, know, you, you, can't, have, you can't have that freedom. You're, you're not ready for it. It's like, well, when will I be ready? When I say you're ready. But how do you know? Ah, that's not for you to know. Right, so you'll never be ready. 
and you can't find out why because the person so-called protecting you from this is unaware of it themselves. But then you got Hancock saying, being opposed to vaccinations where they have been through the rigorous safety process is entirely inappropriate. And I wouldn't advise it for anybody because we don't propose and allow vaccines in this country unless they pass some of the most stringent safety requirements in the world. Getting a vaccine, whether it's for flu or hopefully for coronavirus, is something that not only protects you, but protects the people around you. So it's a really important step. Again, too soon to tell. But they just go on to this and say, oh, there's a Facebook group and there are nurses and um, people from the NHS as well and even a, a registered GP who are against it. And this is terrible because look how bad it's infecting this institution. I was like, Hang on a minute. I thought we were supposed to really like the NHS and trust the, the medical experts, you know, the science. And now you're saying that the NHS, so people in the NHS, and then also these GPs who have been doctors for decades are questioning the coronavirus vaccine and what's being done about it and now we should ignore them it's so, oh right so you have no guiding principles whatsoever no critical thoughts of your own it's just pushing an agenda right whereas the rest of us of course we go hmm we got questions for the initial claims coming out and then it seems some of the medical experts agree with the, the line of questioning and so I go okay cool then what, what are the answers and then they'll propose some answers and we'll address them but, hey, hey, that's about it for now. <laughs> the main point is, never let a good crisis go unused. The speech laws are coming for you, and apparently, if you don't agree with what's being done about COVID, you're a terrorist. But, <laughs> hey, let me know what you guys think down below. Is this going to gain any traction, especially considering that Labour are supporting it, and they're having their own um, in-party fights and troubles there as well, of course. Or do you think I'm just blowing this out of proportion and that no, pe people are going to die, in which case it is akin to terrorism if your actions and your words l lead to hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of unnecessary deaths. In that case, you're essentially a terrorist. You've got blood on your hands. Either way, let me know down below. Always intrigued to hear what I have to say. And thanks for commenting, sharing, liking, subscribing, all the good stuff really does help the channel out. Most of all, until next time, have a good one.